good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today, we're looking at an Ormus Star card, which first of all is very, very good, and second of all, could be a bit of a problem. Now, the good news is, it is a fighting Pokemon. Finding Pokemon right now is good. It would mean you could use Brooklyn Hill, except this is a fossil Pokemon. More on that in a moment. It means you've got Diancy Prism Star to do an extra 20 damage. It means you're hitting weakness on Zoroark, which is huge. Retreat cost of two is also bigger than ideal. Weakness to grass. I mean, it's honestly fine. The, the, the ones that are going to one-hit you are going to one-hit you anyway. It does mean you, you are hit by Golisopod. Other than Golisopod, it's really not a problem. Speaking of which, you do have 130 HP, so something like a Boswell or a Zoroark will be struggling to get a one-hit KO, which is nice. But none of that is the most important thing about Omastar. The most important thing about Omastar is the ability, which is phenomenal. The ability is called Fossil Restraint. If you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, your opponent can't play item cards from their hand. It's Item Lock. Not only is it Item Lock, it is... You cannot get away from it, Item Lock. It is, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I'm Item Locked and there's no way around it. Item Lock. An item lock is good. Item lock has long been a way to beat decks. Almost guaranteed. Vile Plume was great. The thing was, Vile Plume was a stage two. Forest of Giant Plants got banned. And one of the main reasons was essentially turn one Vile Plume. That's a bit of an issue. Trevenant. Trevenant's an item lock when it's in the active. And that got Wally banned. Because Wally could give you a turn one Trevenant going first. With a Wally ban, Trevenant's alright. And let's not forget about Seismitoad that did 30 damage and item lock. The thing is, there's ways around all of that. Seismitoad, you could try running them out of energy with stuff like Zerosic. Or you could just play a Pokemon Ranger, which would turn it back on. That being your items. Vile Plume was a Pokemon with a retreat cost of 3. Making things like Lysander way effective against it, as well as it being a slower stage two. And Trevenant's only when it's in the active, so you could use stuff like Lysander to bring something else active. And then it's no longer in the active, unless your opponent's only got Trevenant on the bench. And then both Trevenant and Vileplume were abilities, so you could use Garboda to turn off their abilities and turn back on your items. So if we flick back round to Omastar, none of this applies. It's whether it's in the active or whether it's on the bench. It does have a usable attack and the retreat cost of two means it can be retreated with something like a double colorless energy. It's certainly not the worst retreat cost ever. Higher than we'd like, but we can deal with it. And we don't have anything that will turn this off right now other than slacking, which first of all, slacking isn't good. Secondly, slacking is weak to fighting, which Omastar could well end up being, although it doesn't have to be. That's it. You are not turning off Omastar's ability. The thing is, this is a very specific kind of ability. It's when you've got fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent. So if you've got three Pokemon in play, your opponent can go, right, I've only got two, but at least now I can use items. So this does introduce a weird quirk whereby do you try attacking with Omastar... And that will then reduce the number of Pokemon you've got in play, meaning you're likely to get item lock. Or do you try teching this into a deck with something like Buzzwall? Basic fighting Pokemon, decent damage, few energy, etc, etc. So do you play this on its own or do you play it with something else? The thing is, if we look at the format at the moment, we are used to playing a format with large benches. Naganadal decks are huge right now. Something like Blacephalon Naganadal needs a whole bunch of Naganadal on the bench. Not to mention a lot of decks are playing Orangaroo, a lot of decks are playing Macargo or Zeb Striker, and all of these are bench spaces. I myself have been playing a lot of Gramble lately. And the thing about Gramble is you can get away with just having a Gramble, but then the problem is that well, you kind of need a Rangaroo and Macargo to make sure you can continually get zero cards in hand so you can make the most of Granbull. 
I'm not saying this will work against everything. But I'm saying if you can build your deck properly, this will work against most things. Now, you essentially have to say goodbye to those consistency Pokemon. Orangaroo, Makago, Zeb Striker, they're essentially all gone. Because you don't have room to play them. Because that could be the thing that gives your opponent their items back. But what you do is you build a deck reliant on supporters like Cynthia, for argument's sake. Or maybe even item cards like Acrobike, for instance. And then, okay... You're not able to use all of these support Pokemon, but you've made a deck that doesn't rely on them. Your opponent's unable to use items, and oh yeah, they are reliant on items. And of course, the other thing you can do here is play this with something like Mimikyu and Gengar Tag Team GX. Because you see, that's got an amazing attack for two Psychic Energy Poltergeist, which does 50 damage for each trainer card in your opponent's hand. Well, if you're using Omastar to make sure that they cannot play any item cards, then all those item cards are going to be clogging up their hand. And then you do lots more extra damage with Mimikyu and Gengar. This is a very awkward Pokemon to use. You have got to have a smaller bench than your opponent. But seriously, just eschewing stuff like Makago will make a huge difference here. If this gets big, it is going to change the way we construct our decks. If people can make a working Omastar list, it is going to change the way that we all build our decks. And that's kind of hilarious. But you need to have a deck that can run on very few Pokemon. Now, both a blessing and a curse to this is a fossil mechanic. You see, this cannot go down as a Pokemon generally. What you do is you have unidentified fossil in play... And then you evolve that up into Omastar. On the one hand, yes, that's awesome. Because you can always just discard it to turn your item lock back on, which is good. And it means you cannot start with it, which means you're likely to start with other Pokemon, which is going to help you keep your Pokemon on the field very few. But on the other hand, it's just an awkward mechanic. Because you cannot search this out with something like Professor Round Lecture. Yes, it is essentially a 60 HP Pokemon. But you can't search it out with Professor Round's Lecture. You cannot search it out with Nest Ball. All of this is a little bit of an issue. But it means that you can play other starting Pokemon. It means that you can play Pokemon that you want to start with. And if you play four of them and four unidentified fossil, you are going to start with the Pokemon you want to start with. Maybe you want a Tapu Koko so you can spread damage in the early game while having a free retreater for when you're ready. Well, if you play four unidentified fossil, four Tapu Koko, you are going to start Tapu Koko in every game, which is kind of sweet. Now, the problem is you're going to need an attacker. An Omastar can be an attacker. 60 damage for 2 energy is fine. The weakness you're hitting against stuff like Zoroark is good. With Choice Band it's 90, which is okay. But the thing to remember here is your opponent's item locked. Which means they're not going to be setting up very easily. Which means they're not going to be able to attack you as easily. Which means that you're going to survive a little bit longer. Which means you don't need to do quite as much damage. The question really is... Can you survive with an Omastar deck? Or do you have to have another attacker? And as for what other attacker you want, doesn't really matter. Just make sure it doesn't need much support. So you can play something like Boswell, which is awesome. But then if you play Diancy Prism Star as well, that could be a slight issue because you're filling up your bench. You can play Zoroark and that's lovely. But you need to make sure that you've got something else for if Zoroark goes down. Because if you're against a fighting deck, you want to make sure that your Zoroark is okay. And you don't really want to leave him up there on his own. It doesn't matter what you pair this with. You can pair it with almost anything. If you can keep your bench to a low level, you will item lock your opponent for the entire game. Now, there are a couple of other cards we need to mention before we finish up here, one of which is Omastar Break. Now, Omastar Break is only in the expanded format. It has rotated out. But you can evolve this Omastar into Omastar Break. Weirdly, this means you're hitting for Water Weakness as well as Fighting Weakness. It replaces it, but it means you get the choice. It gives you an extra 10 HP, but it also gives you another ability, which is a once-per-turn Pokemon Catcher without the coin flip. 
So if you're playing this in Expanded, Omastar Break is nuts good. But the other card here is Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. You see, Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick is going to be banned. I'm going to bring you a video about this specifically tomorrow. But using Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick, this is now a fighting Pokemon. Which means that you can play a Turn 1 Maxi's and you can get a Turn 1 Omastar going first. Which means that your opponent will have no items for the entire game. They will never get to play a single item card. Which is Radonk. Now, to be fair, it might not work immediately. Because you've got to have a Pokemon you start with, then you play this. So it basically means your opponent loses items the second they put their third Pokemon down. And never gets them back. But if they start with free Pokemon, they're out of it. This makes Maxis a problem, and I've not got time to go into it in this video. We'll talk about Maxis properly tomorrow. But I'm telling you this now, this is a great card. Some people are going to play it as an attacker in its own right. Some people are going to put a thin line of this into another deck. You can't play it in something like Naganadal or Malamar, because those decks need a bunch of bench Pokemon. But this will feast on decks like Naganadal and Malamar. But in any deck you can afford to play this, where you can be rolling with one or two Pokemon, you will have such a ridiculous advantage. And if you don't believe me, Seismato, Trevenant, Vileplume, I rest my case. I'm going to tentatively give this five Wossies. It's not perfect, and it's not the easiest card to use. But it is such an impactful card the second it gets onto the field that I really do think it is going to shake up a lot of games. And if anybody can get this working and rolling consistently, this is going to cause problems. But I want to know what you think about Omastar, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy for some more Wossy action. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.